Uh, Daniel Burnham, a, a, a architect and um, urban designer, said, make no small plans because it's really large plans that drive inspiration, that keep movements happening and that sort of thing. So we're going to try to end up where we're not making small plans, but that we're really looking at how do we identify existing things that need to be elevated, what are gaps that really do need to be closed, and what are just massive transformational opportunities that we need to focus on. What truly makes the difference? That's what we're very interested in. Sports and health is a very complex system. We need a more of a system approach to sports, public health, and, um, and physical activity. Uh, Simulation model, modeling can really show what some of these benefits are and test different types of policies and interventions. And even modest increases in physical activity really can generate major savings. I frequently say that physical activity is the new kid on the block in public health. Uh, it's not the new kid on the block in, uh, in many other sectors of our society, though. It's uh, long played an important role in education, health care, business and industry, sport, parks and recreation, and others. Right now, we have a great call to action that, that advances the idea of having walkable communities, but we have no system right now to measure walkability in this country. We need to fix that. This past spring, the Global Alliance for Health and Performance, created by ACSM and Johnson & Johnson, launched in association with the Congressional Fitness Caucus, a congressional commitment to physical activity. Several members of Congress have signed on and a request is going through Congress as we speak, requesting that all members of Congress sign this so that we can get America moving. And say, I know that health and physical activity is always right. All right, shake it out, shake it out. Give yourselves a hand. We know the walking movement is growing and the call to action was a watershed moment in its development, but our work is far from over. We must expand what we mean by walkability to include access to affordable housing, convenient and accessible transportation options, and the ability to live in safe, walkable places. Sport is a mechanism for inclusion and a way forward for those living in difficult circumstances. And the Olympics inspire people to rise above their challenges and realize their dreams. A colleague and friend of mine, uh, Linda Mastandrani, she made the statement, uh, we were on a conference call, and she said, she looks forward to the day when there is no inclusion. And what she's basically saying is, it'd be great if uh, whenever a new building is erected or whenever a new program is developed, that the mindset, the public policy is very much geared towards making sure everything is inclusive to people with disabilities. I believe that any organization that has power in this society, it has to get that youth sport must be available for everyone and that it, it, it's not only from a selfish point of view, if you're including everyone, then you're going to have potentially the best people playing in college sports, but from a more holistic point of view, it's better for society. I think if we can teach people and educate more about the importance of physical activity is not just getting kids healthy and physically healthy, but emotionally and mentally and those health benefits as well, I think it's huge. There's all types of uh, opportunities that we have to exploit in order to get kids back to fitness. I think um, I know President Obama said that um, uh, challenging children and kids to get back into science, technology, engineering, and math is a, is a national security uh, issue. And this health issue is, is going to be a national security uh, issue 20, 30, 50 years from now as well. We haven't done enough of understanding why do they like being active and you know, why would they like this sport better than the other one? And most kids really like to tell you how they feel because no one ever listens to them. So we, we need to do a lot more, but we need to start thinking about the kids who aren't the natural athletes to keep them active because they're the ones we're most concerned about.
we cannot figure out why we can't get the health industry, the health care industry, or the um, life insurance industry, or the pharma, or other folks to f pay more attention to how important physical activity is to their interests. Why can't we? We need help. So we need to collaborate much more. That if you professionally manage athlete acquisition like a business, because we care so deeply about it, that you will materially drive up participation, and you'll do so at a net negative uh, economic cost. That's our idea. Can you imagine if we could manage, measure somebody's activity consistently, measure their weight consistently, which we can, deliver this information to them wherever they are, keep them engaged with a coach virtually, whether that's a human coach or a coach bot, and it's, those exist. Um, can these be more engaging? Can they be more uh, effective? Can they be better able to measure whether they're successful? You bet they can. And so what Fitbit's aimed at is not just changing individual behavior now, but really looking at ways we can embed our solutions into the healthcare system um, as a whole. And what is striking to me is that while these illnesses are complex, while they're expensive, it turns out that there are steps that we can take that will help to reduce our chances of getting diabetes and heart disease. Uh, and some of them are surprisingly simple. And one example is walking. And that's one of the reasons that we released the call to action last year on walking in walkable communities. Because at a time when people believe that complex problems require complex, expensive solutions, we wanted people to know that there are some simple solutions out there that can have a measurable impact on health.